Okay, so this is going to be my post-game Penn State-Ohio State. Penn State completely choked this game away. There's no other way of saying it. There's no excuses. This, this exact same thing happened last year. It happened to USC in the Rose Bowl. There's no excuses. Penn State should have won this game, but it's not Ohio State's fault. It's their own fault. They did not play discipline defensively. They All they want to do is blitz. It's their own fault why they lost this game. And there's really no other way of describing it. Penn State came out to an early lead. They had some, they left some points on the board in the first half, in my opinion. They had that one drive where they came out empty-handed with the Pinnaker miss. They had to settle for a field goal off the turnover. Ohio State got themselves back in the game with that touchdown before the half to make it 13-7. to And then Penn State uh, trailed. 14 to 13 and Ohio State had a field goal to make it 17 13 and all but they missed it though they made it and then it went back 15 yards and then Ohio State made it which made I mean and then Ohio State missed it to make it 14 to 13 Penn State was trailing only by one at that point and then they Penn State came down in the fourth quarter and they got a touchdown and we're like okay well we're back in the lead and it was kind of looking like a game where it's going to be a real low scoring grind out kind of game where both teams were going to be kind of feeling each other out, and it's probably going to be a real low-scoring battle. And kind of like whoever scores, you know, next is kind of going to win the game. It was 28-14 to 14 Penn State. Then Ohio State gets the ball back. They didn't really do anything. Then Penn State got the ball. They conducted a nice drive. They got up 27-14 with eight minutes left. Everything was looking pretty. We were up 13 points. It was like... Okay, uh, no, it, it, it was 26-14. We missed the two-point conversion, but it was like, whatever, it's 26-14. Now, that two-point conversion actually ended up costing us the game, actually, because if we had made that, it would have went into overtime, and maybe we would have won. But that's not the point here. The point here is that at that point, at 26-14, to Penn State had the game kind of in the bag. It, it was a lot like last year. Penn State was up 12 this year. Last year they were up 11. Last year there was about 5 minutes left. This year there was about 8. There's a lot like USC in the Rose Bowl. Penn State did not do a good job at finishing this game off. Ohio State made that, that, that first drive. I'm like, this is critical because if, if Penn State can get some stops, they'll be okay on this drive. Um, I'm like, there, there's, there's eight minutes left. If Penn State can get some stops and, or, or give Ohio State a touchdown, but don't let them score in a minute and 16, let them score in maybe four minutes. That is unacceptable. It's inexcusable. We missed tackles. They got that 47 yard touchdown. We should have, it should have only been a 12 yard gain, but we missed like 500 tackles on that play and you know, they scored. And then it's 26-21. There's there are some nerves there because now there's six. There's there's still 642. So it's like if we go nowhere on this play, they're gonna get the ball. Uh, if we go nowhere on this next drive, they're gonna get the ball back with a lot of time left. Now the good news was we did construct a good drive and we did not go that conservative. That was the only part where I give Penn State credit to in the last eight minutes of the game. We attacked it, McSorley. Ran with his legs. We used him well. We made some nice passes. But we still... It was looking like there was going to be a face mask. They called it back. It would have put us inside the 40 with a new set of downs. But it got called back. It was 2nd and 14. Then it went to 3rd and 5, I think. Um, or... No, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm mixing that up, I think. I, I think I'm thinking of the last drive, actually. But there was something where it was like a... Th- it, it was the 3rd and 5, and McSorley threw an incompletion. It was kind of close. But if we get that first down, we're down in like the, around the 32-yard line, and we have a good chance of winning the game. And we just we punt the ball away, which is fine. It's at the 4-yard line, a perfect punt. All we got to do is make some plays. The defensive scheme was terrible. It was the exact same thing as last year. How come our secondary looks good pretty much in every other game this year, except App State towards the end of the game like today? And last year, it looked pretty good for the most part in every game except Ohio State in the last eight minutes and at times against Michigan State last year, okay? But... 
Our secondary went from being amazing tonight to being a complete disaster. And you want to know why? It's because we blitz with seven guys, so we only have a few guys in the backfield, and they're doing screens to their receivers on, you know, just little screens, and if they get a block, they're going to be getting big chunks. So while you go, oh, well, it's a screen, well, you know, they never work. Well, yeah, it works if you're only rushing four, and you have a bunch of linebackers running after them, and you get some cornerbacks who can actually, you know, make some tackles. And that is the difference between a good scheme and a bad scheme. We don't need to get, well, we want pressure, but if there's, if nobody's open, he won't be able to throw to anybody. You know what I'm saying? So, by getting all that pressure, they were like, well, Penn State's blitzing us. So, what we're going to do is, we're just going to do quick release screens and quick little check down passes, quick little, you know, slant passes for, you know, seven yards, and we're going to get seven yards, and then we're going to run for five, and then we're going to get, you know, 12, and then we're going to get 14, and then we're going to get 24, and then we're going to get an incompletion, and then we're just going to march our way down the field and score. And it's like, what are we doing, Penn State? Like, can't we catch on? This is the exact same thing they did last year, pretty much, with the Penn State, oh, well, we got to dial them up, you know, and then leave, like, four guys in our backfield. It's not enough, and... It, it just doesn't work. It was a little bit different last year because last year they like they marched down the field. This year, it was a little slower. But that last drive, they marched down the field pretty quick because we still had 203 left. And now this is where I'm like, okay, we got 203 left. We got all three timeouts. We have all three timeouts, okay? So we got enough time to win this game and drive down the field and get a field goal because they did miss the two-point conversion. So, first play, we get a big completion to Pat Fryermuth. We're down at the 47-yard line. Their 47-yard line. You know, so that's a really big gain. And then we get a sack, and that's where they said the face mask came in. And they said there, it wasn't a face mask. And it, it wasn't a face mask. It was not. Uh, it was a good call by them. And they made it 2nd and 14, and then we had an incompletion, a 3rd and 14. I don't mind that deep play to Polk, it's a, it's fine, and then we get a nice run by McSorley, so we got 4th and 5, okay, so not bad, the drive stalling a little bit, but we gotta go for it, and we're at, I think the 43, I think we're at the 43, but this is my problem. This is this is this is my biggest problem. This is a complete disaster by whoever called this play. Ricky Ronnie, our offensive coordinator, or James Franklin, whoever called this play, that is like the literally the worst play call you, uh, you could have called ever. That is a terrible call. First off, we have all three timeouts. We call a timeout, you know, because. You know, this is a pretty big play. It's pretty much the game. I mean, we still got all three timeouts if we don't call one, but it's pretty much the game. So we call a timeout. Then Urban Meyer calls a timeout. So then we're like, oh, well, we need to call another timeout. So now, if we don't get it, this is the game. So we call two timeouts for a run up the middle to Miles Sanders. It makes no sense. It was a terrible call. Why are we running it on a fourth and five when the game is on the line? It literally makes absolutely no sense at all. It's literally the dumbest call you could have called. I mean, maybe a direct run to McSorley could have been dumber, but no, I don't even think that would have because that actually worked tonight a lot of times. But they had spies there. But they also had spies there from Miles Sanders. So I don't understand why we did not pass. Like, seriously. Like, they were expecting us to pass. I was expecting us to pass. It's a fourth and five. Like, it doesn't matter if the game's on the line or not. Most of the time you're passing. Well, you got to pass here. You can't expect Miles Sanders to get five yards. And they just keyed in on that run. Our O-line didn't do crap blocking. And it went nowhere. And it was like, the game's over. Like, what? We were up pretty much the whole game except for, well, for a lot of the third quarter, they were up. But it was like we had control of this game just like last year, and we just completely pissed the game away again. And it happened in the Rose Bowl, and it happened now, and it happened last year. 
this is a game that if we win, we're 5-0. and And if we're 5-0, and then we beat Michigan State, and we're 6-0. and But Michigan State's a tough game. Do I think we're, we're a better team? No, I... I'm pretty sure we're a better team. I think we're a more talented team. I'm glad we got a bye week because last year we had that emotional loss and it was like we played so flat against Michigan State. We got to regroup. This was a tough loss. We This is going to take us a few days to rebuild. You know, even just me. You know, it, it's going to hurt tomorrow getting up. Like, on Monday and Tuesday, it's going to be like, Ugh, we could have won. Like, we, we had this game in the bag, man. Like, and if we're 5-0... and oh, we can lose a game. We can lose to Michigan or Wisconsin or Michigan State or anybody, but those are probably the three hardest games that we have on our way out. Um, looking ahead, we got to win out. I mean, Michigan State, I think, Michigan State and Iowa are games that we should win. I think we're a better team. They're home games. We should win, but they're not guarantees, and they're not even games that you go, yeah, we should definitely win. We got way more talent. But we do have a, I, I do feel we have a clear cut edge, and we if we come out and we do what we're capable of doing, like e- even what we did tonight uh, offensively, and we play well defensively, like how we did tonight, there's no doubt in my mind that we can't win those games, like 35, 24, 35, 17, you know, something like that. Uh, and then Wisconsin and Michigan, those are going to be tough games, you know. Michigan's a very good team. I don't think they match up well. I, I don't think we match up well with them. I don't know if Michigan State matches up well. I, I don't think we match up well with Michigan State, honestly. I I don't think we do, but if we can, uh, we don't need to blitz a Lewarki, We just have to cover. You know what I'm saying? If our defense can play like how it did tonight against Michigan State and get some pressure, we'll be okay in that game. But at the, at the end of the day, if we don't, he's going to pick us apart like he did last year. Offensively, I think we can do okay. I think we can make some passes. I think we can run the ball okay. But, I don't know. I mean, we just got to mentally regroup. This was a tough loss. I don't know how far we're going to go back in the poll. I don't, we may not go back at all. Because if we won, we would have gone up. We would have passed Ohio State. We would have passed Oklahoma, LSU. We probably would have passed uh, the loser Notre Dame Stanford, too. So, we probably would have been, like, fifth in the country. But, it didn't happen. But, it's nobody's fault except our own. And, this really makes me wonder about Franklin as a coach. Because, Franklin... Like, what are you doing, man? Like, what is going on in your mind? Like, this happens all the time. And it's like, you're a good coach. Like, some of the stuff you do is very good and good. It's very good and it's intelligent. But at the same time, it's like, what kind of play calling and what kind of game management is going through your damn head in the last eight minutes of these games, man? Like, it's, it's the third time now. It's the third time. You know, and you say, oh, well, all these games that we've won, well, yeah, but these are games that we've been up, and up by a lot, and it's big games, and it's like we get ants in our pants, and we go like, well, we don't want to, you know, try to do anything stupid, so we're just going to try to get as much pressure as we can, you know, and hope that we can cover with, like, three guys, you know, it, it doesn't work, it hasn't worked, and it will continue not to work, so that's what I got from this video. I'm mad. It's frustrating. It's going to be a tough few next days for me. Uh, but, yeah, that's a wrap. Got to get over it. Peace out, guys.